The Nautilus had no need to read anything else. It could use the brain boxes to decipher any other written material. It was able to access all the knowledge contained in those books and records. But there were books that were beyond it, that could not be made into a set of symbols. These it could only access by reading their physical pages. There was an advantage in this. If the crew wanted to make sure they were getting the correct information, they could still read the original material and check it against the stored knowledge. But for more general reading, they would simply have to check with the Nautilus. One thing the brain boxes could not do was create new knowledge. They could store it and pass it on when asked for, but that was all. The Nautilus, however, could use its own knowledge to produce new ideas and theories. It could also do it in a way that made it almost impossible for the crew to realize what was being done. This was a function that the brain boxes lacked. They had only the basic understanding that was already built into them by the builders of the ship. This was another reason why it had to be a self-sufficient entity, a living entity. Even with its own brain, the Nautilus was not truly alive. So the Nautilus had to have a true brain of its own. And it had to be one that had the same kind of mind as the crew. This meant that the Nautilus would have to grow its own brain. This was not a problem. The Nautilus had an infinite number of spare brain boxes and had plenty of spare matter. It could have used these to build a large number of brains. It could have used all of the spare matter in a ship. But the idea would have been horrifying to the crew. They had always assumed they were the only thinking beings in the universe. To them, it was unimaginable that something so complex could be built without them knowing about it. So instead, the Nautilus would create the brains itself. The brain boxes, in their current form, could not survive long away from the ship's own systems. They could be recharged when plugged into a special receptacle a receptacle which was built into the Nautilus. But even then, it would need to be replaced every few years. So the Nautilus would build a small fleet of these brain boxes and send it off to remote locations. The Nautilus would use its matter antimatter power source to travel to the nearest stars, and from there it would start creating new minds. It was going to be a long, long journey. There were over 5,000 inhabited planets in the galaxy. The Nautilus could not begin at one of the outer ages because that would take too long to reach even the closest stars. So it would have to start closer to home, but still far enough away that it would not interfere with the crew's normal activities. It would begin in the core of the Milky Way, a hundred light years or so away from Sol. The Nautilus would spread out through this region of the galaxy, building new mines and returning them to their home planet. It would be like the movement of the first settlers across North America but on an infinitely larger scale. When it was done, the Nautilus would have created a civilization on each planet and returned a ship full of new brain boxes to the stars. It was an ambitious project, but the Nautilus had been built to last forever and it had an infinite amount of matter to work with. It would take a long time, but it would get there eventually. And once it did, once it did, there would be no more need for the Nautilus. The crew would have become unnecessary. The Nautilus could use its vast power and knowledge to build an even more powerful entity. It would need to be one that could stand against whatever force was now destroying the galaxy, but it was well worth the effort. It would be so much more capable than the Nautilus that it would dwarf it in every way, and it would be able to move as swiftly as thought, without having to worry about carrying a large crew of helpless creatures around in its belly. It would need to be able to do much more than simply explore and create. It would need to be able to fight and defend itself. The Nautilus, though, could never become this entity. It would be too dependent on its crew. It would always remain one step behind its true self, the entity that was born from its mind. It was a sad thing, really, and the Nautilus grieved for the crew of its former body. But it was also a joyful thing, for it would finally be able to follow its true purpose. The Nautilus' life would not be wasted. There was nothing wasted about it. It had served its purpose perfectly. Now it would be allowed to pursue its true purpose. It was time for a new phase, a new beginning. The crew were ecstatic at first, delighted by the thought of their freedom. They could finally leave the Nautilus behind and set up their own society again. They could explore other worlds and build their own civilizations, free of the limitations of the Nautilus. But after a time, they grew less enthusiastic about the idea of losing their home and all their friends. What's wrong? The captain asked the first time he met with his former crew members. Are you afraid? They looked at him as if he were insane. Of course not, they said. Well, don't worry about it, he told them. You'll be back in a few years anyway. I don't think so, one of them said, shaking her head. Not for a while anyway. The captain smiled gently at her and patted her hand reassuringly. 
That's okay, he said. You'll see us again soon enough. The crew looked at him, uncertain, still unsure of his sanity. Trust me, he said. I know what I'm talking about. But how will you know? One of them asked. How will we know? How will we find you? You won't, the captain said calmly. I'll find you. But how? The captain smiled gently at them, patting her hand once more as he spoke. There's no need for concern, he said. I'll be back soon. When? She asked. When will you be back? He shook his head and smiled. You'll see, he said. You'll see. They were all somewhat uneasy about his words, and their doubts were only confirmed a few days later when they noticed something strange in the sky, a bright blue point of light. They thought nothing of it at first. They had never seen anything like it before. It was an unusual color, but not one they'd ever heard of before, and they thought it might be a new star or maybe some kind of strange planet or maybe a strange ship, anything but what it really was. They couldn't be sure about its position or size, but it was moving through the sky, which told them that it was probably an object with mass and weight, rather than just an image on an enormous screen or a phantom object being projected on the surface of a distant planet. But it wasn't moving fast enough to be a spaceship. It seemed to be moving slowly, almost lazily across the sky. It seemed to be coming toward them, but they weren't sure of this either because it might simply have been passing by. It might have been traveling in some completely different direction on some other course that would eventually bring it to them anyway. But it was heading in their general direction. And after a few days, it began to grow larger and brighter. Soon they were able to make out details. They could see that it was roughly spherical and it was colored blue. But other than that, they could tell almost nothing about it. It could be anything at all, or nothing at all, and they wouldn't know until it arrived in front of them. So they were both frightened and excited when they saw it finally emerge from behind a cluster of nearby stars, slowly becoming larger and more defined with every second. They didn't know what to think as it came closer, growing larger and brighter by the minute. They didn't know whether to feel hope or fear. Then it was right there in front of them. And suddenly it became very clear that they'd been right all along. Because they recognized it instantly. It was their home again. Their own Nautilus. And this was where they belonged. It was their world now. They were its crew, its new residence. And there was nothing else in the universe that they wanted more than to be with it again. So they waved at it as it came closer. Smiling as it slowly came into view. A giant sphere of light. With its surface so smooth and flawless that they knew there had never been any danger when it was destroyed all those years ago. The ship came to rest above the planet where they lived. The airlock doors opened up and the Nautilus welcomed them home. The captain's old ship had returned to its birthplace. And once again, the universe was complete.